I decided I will add a little video to this article for better understanding. Uh, I will state basically whatever people that gathered inside of this home uh, couldn't say, he wanted to say, but he couldn't say. Uh, and so because it makes sense to me and a little bit I did misunderstood myself. I don't want little people to get in trouble. That's what bothers me the most. Uh, however, I figure out that it's time to do something about this. It's time to say a few words that uh, the people that are in charge couldn't say. Uh, because they could. Simply they couldn't. But I think it is in their best interest of the small people, especially the people in people Palestine. Lebanon, it's a little beautiful country, I think. But when it comes to, you have your sovereignty. Uh, but when it comes to Palestine, the situation is completely different. Folks, let's go first. Let's see what Palestine, Lebanon, and Israel. Let's let's see what exactly they look like. Yeah, and once I'm done with this stuff, that's when I'm gonna give you a message that a people from Jordania, people from Syria, people from Lebanon, people from uh, Egypt. Yeah. Uh, and people from Turkey and people from Saudi Arabia, people from all over the place that negotiated this stuff here, that had a problem with this stuff. What exactly their thoughts are? Because these are the people officially, I'm going to say, uh, I myself am joining to. I, am, I don't want to take any kind of steps of mine. I don't also want to give you a misinformation. You can consider this as a misinformation. It doesn't matter to me. You can consider this whichever way you want. You can make a phone call, maybe, if you're in doubts to your people. Uh, you can have your people engage diplomacy with people from other countries. It would be the best. I'm not taking any responsibility for this stuff. But I'm just going to give you the best take because it really breaks my heart, really. To read the news like this, it breaks my heart because it gives a hope and it gives the false hope to the people. I'm afraid it's giving, it's 100%, it's giving a false hope to the people. This is going to go under this article right here. And just as I stated, I am against, very much against, uh, for many reasons, I even called here, I even refer to the Israel as an apartheid state. I am bothered with the Israel because I was a victim of the Israel in Miami. For 11 and a half years, I was hijacked from the building, which was at least 90% and probably even 95% was Orthodox Jews that lived inside of that building, Jews, period. From Miami Beach, where a concentration of Jewish population is, I'm not going to say only the highest in the United States of America, but it's probably higher than anywhere in Israel, probably. This is it's like a little area where I was. It's like, it was almost like, it was close to, it was a very, very high percentage, extremely high percentage of Jewish population over there. And, uh, I disappeared time and again from their environment, find myself in other locations of the world. It true is United States of America. It was in Miami, it was in Florida. Still, I haven't seen this as in any way justified 
genocide against me because Israel was involved in this ordeal since my childhood, since my early, early childhood, and did side against me, did support Soviets, did support Serbs, did cause me a lot of trouble along the way. Still, I don't, I don't, I'm not requiring anybody to see yourself in me. It doesn't matter whether you see yourself in me. I know this is a video about me. Uh, this is what is the best for you to do under the given circumstances. So it's just as I stated at the beginning of the video, I'm going to dedicate this video to the diplomats, to the people that surround Palestine, right? So Palestine, what's the Palestine? Palestine's are two strips. That's what's left of Palestine. Whatever is marked of the green, and wherever you see in yellow is actually Israel all the way to the Red Sea. So you have a Gaza Strip. That's where the war broke out uh, through a really terrorist attack on Israel. And we have on the other side of Israel, now Israel, it's used to be Palestine. And it was time when it wasn't time. Jews always lived in a peace here with the Palestinian people. They were always here. Uh, they, they in somewhat remained here, loyal to their roots, uh, remained here. And lived here with the Palestinian people. Uh, and then, after the World War II, the, the unthinkable happened. They got back their homeland together. And the people who got this homeland together, they're not really the people I'm afraid you know about very much, but I can assure you that these are the people that decide about this world many, many, many times. The article, you cannot get the taste basically about what you are implicated in as a Palestinian. So, for me, and it really actually hurts me when I look at these borders here, I, for me, it's painful to say to you that you're never going to get Palestine in one piece is it was unless you're going to have israel wiped from the face of the map which is very 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 unlikely israel is a superpower a military superpower which ranges with nuclear arsenal from anywhere to 70 and all the way to 400 nuclear heads is what they say maybe could be more i know that it's not less than 70. Most of the articles claim 80 is the minimum. With that degree of power, nuclear arsenal and everything, Israel is no match for any country in the Arab world. The countries around Egypt realized this and did far beyond countries around Israel. The problem here is big because The patriotism of this Palestinian people, uh, their attachment to their roots, to their homeland, is so big that it's actually really a word of admiration. Uh, but it's painful. It's extremely painful to see the stuff that's happening. That that you. I'm not touched so much by the picture that I posted here, but I see these males, and I don't, of course, it's bad, but you should see the children that are being killed in this latest Israeli uh, response to a really, really something that made the whole thing in respect to 9 11 
it's it's actually even just before 9/11. 10 a.m. Okay. Even turning the public, American public, from 9/11 in 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 an extremely heavy support to Israel in favor against whatever is left of the Palestine, which I demonstrated you the two stripes, the green, as you have seen. Yeah. Yeah. The thing is, I am not the only person who recognized realized about what I stated. Uh, that much more I'm disgusted with 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 somebody who was involved in MK Ultra like this Iranian minister that is suggesting that Israel is going to get a huge hurt, earthquake and so on. He knows very well that's not possible because the second thing that's, that would happen for sure it's going to happen is Iran is going to disappear from the map. So I would really alert Iranian authorities about this individual. This individual is up to no good. But you can do a lot of harm by taking stands that are completely irrational, idiotic, and making them public in a role of some kind of minister or even president or prime minister, whatever the case might be, because it's agreed upon from the other side of the border, and it's the news that's actually used to shadow, regardless of how much you will attempt to, to, to calm, to slow this stuff, you know, you're not going to be capable because you have a person like this, guess whose news is going to be all over the media? You're not going to be seen for the time being till things get even more complicated, more difficult to get resolved. And, you know, uh, taking in consideration facts that I just stressed right now, uh, we can agree that this individual here is doing you no good. And he is doing this stuff already for some time. He is coming up with a really, really crazy statements. You know, uh, individual is corrupt. Not necessarily going to take instructions straight from Americans or British or wherever, whichever way you monitor one. It could well be by visiting Moscow or meeting with a Russian delegation and so on. Also, this guy was involved directly in this stuff. I could almost say for the stuff I'm doing right now that Somebody just is going to take responsibility for the end of Palestine, like for the definite end of the Palestine. And based on what I see, this guy, Iran, I should say, is the one who have chosen this suffering, uh, end of suffering, that so to happen. That's basically how dangerous. I don't have the proof for that stuff, but the clientele of these people inside, meeting inside of this house, uh, could easily give me what I recall the words from these people that met in this house. They no longer can cope with this, they no longer can watch people suffering. But if you go to Gaza, this isn't the first conflict between the Palestine, whatever is left of one, and Israel. It's horrific. This stuff is simply, it's horrific. So I can relate to the people. I'm not going to call their names, but I can relate to what I see as unbearable suffering. It is not myself only that came to this conclusion. Uh, I came to this conclusion because of the people that gave me something to think about. Now, I did jump all over Americans at the beginning of this stuff. I did jump all over British. I, I jumped all over everybody for this stuff that it's not just and so on, uh, that it was in making that it was the Israel that was preparing itself for this stuff. But then again, this is the job of any country. 
That's what the state does, basically. The state always prepares a counterattack, countermeasures, especially if they know that it's going to be some attack. It's going to take place, which Gaza, not, not even the Egypt, and Egypt, Egypt is really what, I don't know how many people they have, maybe 100, I don't know. Compared to Gaza, it's big with the military. Israel is not afraid of one. Israel is a superpower. This is a little superpower uh, that what it does in case like that, because this is a country in making. This is a country in making, just as I say it. Its borders are indefinite. And it's a country that, it's what I said, might always remain in making. It's, in other words, this is a dangerous country because it's a country, I feel, that whatever the conflict is going to be needed in the world, in the future, it's this country here that's going to come to rescue one. Maybe these are not encouraging words for Israel, uh, but I'm observing this from the point of view of the United Nations of countries that are uh, in an area and might in the future even find themselves under a very similar situation Palestine is facing today. The fact of the matter is that countries in the region, non-Zionist, if you like, countries in the region, came to conclusion and have appealed to the Palestinian authorities, whatever it is that you want to refer to as a Palestinian authorities, because this is the biggest problem. The problem is that Palestine did not reserve a military that would engage in a total control of its population. They instead have resorted themselves into alternatives, which are not monitored, as is the case should be. Every gun in a possession of any individual, that's how it, this is, this is what it means to have a complete control over certain situation, over the certain region for which you call a state, a country. You must have as a military, as a military you must have a complete supervision, complete surveillance supervision, as should be the case. And in Gaza, and it should be the case in uh, that other part where Jerusalem is located uh, of the Palestinian Strip, uh, bank, I should say, and this is just not the case. It's unruly, it's unregulated. It's exactly why it causes the headaches to the people in the region, to which Americans, British, and others, at least if you don't like them, semi have suggested reasonably, I should say, at least semi uh, reasonable have suggested for Gaza Strip, let's say, because the Gazan people complain about the situation, economic situation. And I completely, completely agree with it. People say it's unbearable. It is. I'm sure it is. And nobody deserves to live in unbearable, especially in such a beautiful part of the world. Look, they suggested that Gaza Strip, if they don't like Israel, just go join itself to the Egypt. To me personally, if you don't have the solution, uh, this is a very, very, very reasonable solution to the conflict. Because if you don't have solution, because if you're economically dependent on somebody, because if they're doing a blockade on you, and you are located next to somebody like Egypt, sharing same religion, I should say faith, Muslim, uh, Islamic origins, whatever the case might be, this isn't a bad option at all. This isn't a bad option at all. Better than to start the war that you cannot end. And have suggested for what you see here, this part of the 
Palestine, whatever is left of the Palestine, to join hands with whatever, with Jordania, with Jordan. If the worst comes to worst, whatever the worst might be. Now, this year is uh, still big, but when I consider uh, the situation, I think this would be a perfect solution. I think that this would be very, very helpful to uh, whatever is left of the Palestine bank. Uh, eastern part of Palestine, if you like, or right there, or Jerusalem. But it's not feasible. It's not, it's not, it was not what they had in program to do. Um, well, the thing about it is that I'm not even saying that this is what you should do. This is the only way that this is how it's got to be done and this and that and so on and so forth. I just want you to understand that as a Palestinian that you are, and you have people from Egypt and Jordania and Syria and Lebanon, they, they pray for you every day. They see themselves in you more than anybody. Uh, it's just that Unfortunately, this world is not just. And a country in making will always aim on the mind uh, through international criteria, uh, the principles that apply to, uh, to the law, uh, treaties and so on. Uh, and so you do have to somehow protect yourself by making in your countries, at least, a military that would be, uh, let's just say, um, responsible for what I stated earlier, because the primary uh, intention, the, the, the purpose of this, of, of the military of any country is to foremost make sure that there wouldn't be any kind of attack that would occur from the country uh, of origin into out, basically any kind of, you know, you don't have to go and carry on attack on a neighboring country such as Israel in this case. You could cause the attack, uh, and it doesn't have to be Israel. It, it could be in another country in some other part of the world. Could be country in Europe or in Asia that would claim attack against the neighboring country uh, on some other continent or whatever. Yet it's called terrorism. Even for that matter, your security department, therefore, your first, moreover, primary military should have complete overview about what exactly exterior intelligence community, what exactly goes on, so they they know what exactly. Uh, you know, the people that decide about failure of a country that they understand what exactly is happening uh, and basically stop it on time so that it would not glow in, grow into, as we see now here in Gaza, into a fully blown conflict. This is a big, big problem. It's a really giant problem. Uh, the world understands your position very much. However, these are the issues that I must stress you today. Other people have come to realize you must do something about this. Either you must do it like this, or you might do it like that, but you have to have your government, you must hold your government responsible for its actions. Basically, in this case, even allowing Hezbollah uh, to exist, literally. You must have your military, you must have your, or call Hezbollah officially a military. Don't shy from calling one officially a military. Uh, it's all about 
accepting and you know the responsibility basically holding yourself responsible for your own actions and i frankly see if if you have issues like this you should figure out the answer to this stuff because israel guess what it's going to stay here very very long time uh probably forever so unless you have weapons that you can end this war at your benefit uh you should truly if you're from iranian side um definitely you should condemn actions a terrorism actions of gaza against israel uh and it goes likewise to iran you should condemn this so that you would get even a chance for this military invasion that's going to take place on gaza to be stopped before it gets out of hand it you it's going to be more difficult to get israel out of gaza if you ever if, if you ever will get one out by doing what i stated to you and get united nations on your side before or i should say if or once israel gets into the gaza I don't know how much Israel is going to listen to United Nations afterwards and this and that. Now it's something that's been deciding about. You already have made a decision that it could be, who knows, I don't know about this, about Iran taking a side like this, blatantly calling, uh, you know, actually even threatening Israel with, you know, uh, counting on some kind of protests in London. Oh, that actually, that sounds to me insane because really these protests in London, uh, hell, I did put this under this news here. This protests in London, this was all involved in MKUltra. Don't count on it. Don't count on this here. You're going to have a protest now. You're going to see what kind of protests are going to be. They, you see this kind of stuff because you just wait and see what what kind of protests are going to British have and Americans. It's going to turn into a mass hysteria against you. That's right, and equal you with 9/11 and such. They already started doing this kind of stuff. They are already talking about 9/11 and Gaza. This is a problem. This is a big ass problem, man. Look at this, two days ago. You see this shit here, 9-11? Hamas attack on Israel, 9-11. Man, once this kind of stuff starts, uh, Israeli Defense Force compares Hamas to attacks on 9-11. If, if this gets into the full gear and the people that were involved in this stuff. It is uh, by far the the uh, the worst day in israeli history never before uh, have so many israelis been killed this is extremely sophisticated country israel uh it's really based on international agreements uh mutual preparation for basically exactly what why you did this stuff i don't even know why the hell you did this stuff who got you to do this stuff like this uh but you would be better off considering the stuff i stress to you because i stress to you this stuff for your own benefit for your own good and it goes the same to iran even that iran did not even deserve this because of its criminal actions really because of its actions against humanity concerning people in Ukraine.
what you did with the people in Ukraine, this is a genocide, your support for the Russia, who I think personally also got you on this page. I didn't want to see you like this, but as you as you continue down the line and you start to uh, present yourself with 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 even more stupid shit like like taking side like what are you gonna do to the Israel? I mean, you're gonna you're gonna what? You're gonna go and you're gonna nuke the Israel? All right, good luck to you. Uh, think about this stuff a little bit. Uh, my initial point of view is now very different from what it was at the beginning. Um, I don't like Israel. Israel did to me personally a very, very bad things, but I have written down here to you, do not start the war that you cannot end. I think this is a bad time for you to start the war. Uh, a second mistake to Iran, which supported people, uh, supported Russia against people of Ukraine with uh, drones, missiles, all kinds of stuff that rained, killed innocent people in Ukraine. You're heading in a very wrong direction, I'm afraid, and then. It could be uh, the worst that's going to come out of it. I don't like, I really don't like these pictures here with, this really, really hurts me uh, to see, to see, you know, they show this explosion. They don't show the children and stuff. Well, civilians are paying a toll. They're paying a toll, a tremendous toll. Uh, all over Gaza, they are killed. In uh, this, you must understand also it was it is a strategy of Hamas. Uh, next to what we have seen jumping across the border on those paragliders and raining bombs on on Israel from uh, from the uh, from the Gaza Strip, uh, they're using their own uh, children and women to. You know, to appeal to the world, like, uh, oh, look at us. Uh, here are our children. Here are our, uh, you know, here's my baby girl. Here's my boy dead. You know, here's my wife dead and so on. This is a shit strategy. It's a shit strategy that I'm afraid everybody in the region already realized that it's, it's a bad strategy. And so... Just as I stated in this blog, I am joining in this issues here. I'm joining to the people of Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Jordania, Turkey, and other. I'm joining their views. And I hope you Palestinian people, for the Lebanese, I suggest you that you reject Iran and you start to follow the rule of law. But this is about Palestinian people, which to be a kind of the same like Lebanese, be reasonable, okay? Try to understand the nature of this issue uh, is not going to benefit you from within. The rule of law would do much, much, much more for you. All right, so that's all I did. That's all I, I wanted to stress to you. Uh, hopefully, there's still time. And it's also why I placed here up front, I did, for United Nations to vote stop on Israel. Lebanon and Iran must condemn Hamas attack on Israel and the United Nations. Actually, Iranian politicians should help this minister liable for this stuff because he triggered, he sparked something I suggested right below. He would not be able to finish. The whole thing is stupid, stupidity, for which he knows exactly what I stated. He knows exactly what we are talking about. And I did mention at the beginning of the video something that probably even is true. This is a very deep video. You go over and you think about what I stated to you here. 
so that it's not going to be more and more of these children and, you know, women, civilians <clears throat> killed uh, to a land grab, to something, to I should say, to well-justified land grab. It's going to turn the whole world against you. Thanks for watching this video. I just... Uh, that's all I wanted to stress. Maybe for some people it's easier to watch the video than to read. Uh, but I am changing this point of view. Uh, Israel is extremely well prepared, extremely sophisticated with international support in it. Uh, is not presenting absolutely Ukraine in absolutely any way. Uh, and I do not see myself from the point of uh, Holodomor, which Joseph Stalin, this is a 100-year-old genocide, progressive genocide that goes on and on and on and on and on, uh, that the two would have anything in common other than the enemy that is behind this. Uh, that negotiated with Iran this transaction. I'm afraid today I did came to conclusion that Vladimir Zelensky was correct about it. Russia is behind this stuff. Don't follow it to hell. Don't follow it to flames. Because I ain't going to take you anywhere.